sure way of making enemies and how to avoid it. Um, we talked about this a little bit just a second ago, but I want to go a little bit deeper in it because it's super, super important. Um, and it, like, again, remember, I don't like to focus on things that you shouldn't do because where attention goes, energy flows, and like what you focus on becomes a reality. Uh, but this is a really, really important concept. And so make a little bit of a deception here. So never say you're wrong. Erase that phrase from your light. Like, I want you to take a moment and think, you know, sit back and, and ponder, like, when in your life has someone ever told you that you're wrong and you were excited about that or you were thankful that they told you that or they were happy that you let them, they, they let you know you were wrong. Like, nobody likes to be wrong and you don't want someone telling you you're wrong because that's a negative feeling. It's a negative event. That's a bad thing that happens. And so because of that, you feel like crap and you move that, you, you, you transfer that feeling of negativity on to the other person and you make yourself your, your feelings that go to the other person so the person who tells you that you're wrong you associate those negative feelings with them and so if you tell people that they're wrong they're going to associate negativity with you and people don't want to hang out with negative people they want to hang out with super happy positive people and so you never 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 want to tell people that they're wrong even if they are wrong it doesn't matter it's more important to have a quality relationship and a quality connection with somebody than it is to have like the temporary benefit of you know ego boosting with the long-term results of you know crushing the quality of a relationship it's much 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 better to have a temporary loss of your you know ego and say look you know what I could correct you, but I'm not going to because I care so much about this friendship that I'm going to let it grow and succeed and be the best ever. There's a time for teaching. There's a time for, you know, showing people what's right. But with nitpicky things, with once in a hundred, you know, mistakes or tiny little things, most of the time when people make a mistake, they already know that they're wrong. But and internally, they have admitted that they're wrong. But to other people, they don't want to tell other people that they were wrong because it crushes their public face. It destroys their reputation and it makes them feel like other people don't see them as highly as they did before. And so even though they might internally admit that they're wrong, they're going to externally defend themselves. You're going to force them to save face and face is the most important thing someone can have. Like their own image of themselves in public and what people think about them is so important to them. Think about it, right? Like, would you care if someone published a newspaper article with like a, you like doing something awful and everybody thought you were the worst person ever? Like, yeah, libel sucks. Why does libel suck? Because people want their image to look right. They want to save face. And when you tell people that they're wrong, you publish a newspaper article about somebody being wrong, they're going to hate you. So you want to make sure to just avoid telling people that they're wrong and instead just connect with them agree with them agree with people number one thing you can ever do in sales and negotiation like after going through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of training and content just like so many things um like the one biggest word i i, I think we can get from all of it is to agree because the instant that you agree with somebody it disarms them and they are on your side they're on your team and you become friends you've won them over because you agree and people love people that agree with them. People love people of similar mindsets and similar ideologies and similar principles. Because the instant you agree with somebody, you're saying, hey, you know what? I'm just like you. You're not wrong, you're right. I agree with you, that makes sense. Even if they're insane, I, I agree, that makes sense. I'll tell you guys one great example and then, and then we'll move on. Um, you guys probably know, like when I, was, um, when I was writing the book, I was on this ski trip and it was in this hotel and I was just kind of sitting on the couch. It was like four, five, six in the morning, first couple hours of the day. And I'm sitting there with my laptop and I'm just typing away. I think it was about like ETFs or something. And there was this lady and this lady came up and she like told me she was like a babysitter. Um, but she looked like, like this homeless lady. And it, was, it was so sad. Um, and so like she, she was in this like computer room because they had this computer room at the hotel. And she called me over and she was like, hey, can you come help me with this computer and like how to use it and stuff like that. And, you know, I thought about what I was doing at the time. And then I thought about this opportunity that was in front of me to help someone else. And I said, sure, you know, okay, sounds like a plan. Let me help you out. So I came over um, and just gave her a hand, helped her out with um, the, the computer, right? 
And after like you know ten minutes of just setting up a printer and, and getting all that stuff worked out, um, I did what every good friend needs to do. Uh, and I became interested in this person that I'd never met before. And I said, "Hey, you know, where where are you from? Where are you doing? You know, what's your background?" Um, I learned that she was like a real estate lady. Um, and that she had this huge family. And with this family, um, she had like a brother, right? And her brother had like this big family of his own. Um, and she said her problem was like she had to pay her brother uh, royalties or, or cash every month uh, because he didn't make enough money with his family to support his family. And so she was like paying out a ton of money um, from her, her work and her events just to pay her brother. Um, and then she talks about how, you know, she was divorced. And so she had to pay a ton of money to like her ex-husband and his family um, and all this crap. And so she's just like laying out all the problems, laying out all the problems. And what's cool is like, a lot of people will talk about their problems. A lot of people will talk about their successes. And you can kind of tell based on that whether or not they're a happy person or a sad person. Now, she was, she was, she was a little bit of a sad person, which is okay. Because um, this is a really great example. So, did I point out at any moment, like, wow, that's crazy. You know, you shouldn't have to do that. You don't have to pay people. There's a way to get out of that. Did I say, you know, you don't need to do that. That's wrong. No, never. Nada. Zip. I sat there, nodded, yes, okay, got you, listened attentively, gave genuine responses and genuine praise, kept going through it over and over and over again until she finished up what she was saying, moved on to her next points, had her next successes, talked about her next things, which were important to her, focused on what she cared about, and let her talk to me. Um, and then she started talking to me about like social security and, and um, healthcare and Medicare. Um, and how she's living off of, of social, she was living off of social security, right? Because she was like 80. So she was like doing babysitting and then trying to get money from the government. And she was like showing me all these figures about how she wasn't getting paid enough pension from the government and how she like needed to get more money and how it wasn't fair that she was on Medicare and she needed to be on Medicaid um, and how she should switch from, you know, social security to pension, some crap like that. And she's pulling up all these stats on the computer about how there's not enough money and, and making an analysis and a comparison of, of these two government subsidy systems. Not for a moment did I say, have you thought about working? Have you thought about having assets? Do you have any investments? Do you have blah, 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 blah. Maybe it's not the government's job to feed you, blah, 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 blah. Nada. Mm-mm. Nah. -uh. Not for a moment did I say, don't you think you should get out there and do things to bring value to the world? To get more money? She said, nah, mm -mm, nah, -uh. no, no, uh, uh. I sat there and I nodded my head. Took in the information, said, yeah, mm-hmm, gotcha, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, I understand. I see what you're saying there. I listened attentively without rebuking. You know, when you, like, have a, a response in your head that you want to give so badly and that you're, like, bursting to interrupt the other person and you want to, like, interrupt them and say, oh, this is right, that's wrong, blah, blah, blah. Like, you're not listening if, you, if you're thinking about what you're going to say next. And so because of that, I did not think about what I was gonna say next. I just listened attentively and took time to respond and to understand exactly what was going on in the situation. And so as this went by, as this kept going and going and going, um, she, she like prints out this report and is like looking at all these numbers. And it's been like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. All I've done is sit there and say, yes, uh-huh, understood, gotcha, I'm on your side. I see what you mean by that. And listen to this person's story. Not once, saying that she was wrong or pointing out anything faulty in her financial situation. Um, and at the end of that, you know, I, I had to get back to the slopes. I had to go back to ski because, you know, it's ski time, right? It's, it's hype day. Um, and so she starts to get ready to go. She just get ready to leave. And she walks away. She, she, she goes over and she, she grabs her suitcase. Um, and she says, wow, you know, thanks so much for being such a great friend um, or, or talking and listening and talking. Um, about all this stuff with me. I really appreciate it. Um, and like there wasn't anything I could do like at that very moment to transfer her from like negativity to positivity. Like it's just, it's not possible for me to change her internal state of mind. It's, got, it's up to her to become positive. It's up to her to figure out ways to generate massive wealth. Um, but I can sure how to trade stocks, which is cool. Um, but like, you know, it's not, it's, it's like, you can't like change someone. And so I said, I just kept agreeing. Yeah, uh-huh. And going with it and, and trying to make friends. And she goes over her suitcase and she, she pulls out, she says, you know, on the, on the side, I, I sell little trinkets. Um, and so she, she pulls out like this like beautiful like stone globe ornament thing, which is just awesome. And um, this, this awesome like stone bracelet. 
um, and, and just like hands these, these two gifts to me and, and says, thank you so much for, for, for talking and, and walks away and leaves. Now, probably the deepest thing I told her about me in this entire conversation was like, I got my first job at 15 at Subway um, and then that was like it. And from her, I got like her whole life story and everything she'd ever spoken of. And it was all about her. The whole conversation was about her. And from this interaction, she had so much value. She got such a large feeling of significance and importance from being able to talk to somebody about her life situation and vent her problems that she went and gave me like these two amazing, amazing, amazing gifts um, that I gave to my mom and my grandma for that coming up Christmas. Um, as, as presents, and, and now I didn't have to go Christmas shopping. Um, because, and solely because, I sat there and listened and gave her a feeling of significance and importance by being there for her, by her side. Not necessarily solving any of her problems, we didn't solve any of her problems whatsoever, but just by being someone there to listen. Um, and that's, that's a sure, sure way to make friends. And you just never, for the flash of an eye, say that someone's wrong or say something negative about them because you want to eradicate all negativity and move every single thing and every statement that you make towards a total and complete pure world of bliss and positivity. So, whew, hope you guys got a ton of value from that and understood you know, the principles from that and agreeing with people and, and sticking with them because that's, that's some cool, cool stuff. Rarity takes Manhattan, woo! All right, so this is like so fun. Oh my God, okay. so. Rarity's at like top designer, right? And Manhattan is like the biggest, like it's, you know, it's Manhattan, it's like Manhattan, right? So it's like, it's supposed to be like the top of the top of the line, um, good stuff. And so she goes here with all of her designs, all of her dresses, all of her friends. She takes her power base. She takes the people that can connect with her and that deserve to be around her and that allow her to function at her peak potential um, to, to Manhattan, right? And when she's here, she's like red, ridiculously generous like she's tipping bellhop she's having like the best time she's having the time of her life she's giving to the community um so that you know good fortune will come back great happiness will come back and so um to sort of express and, and to introduce this scene and to introduce these guys coming um together in town we're gonna go into a quick song i know Cody's just bursting into song in random places at the drop of a hat who does that oh manhattan what you do to me a huge bustling community and there's always opportunity to do the friend and be thing if some are grouchy pay no mind surprise instead with something kind lo and behold you may just find Please allow me to take those bags to your room for you. Only if you accept this gratuity first. Oh, 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 I'll get you changed. Do keep it all. I insist. Generosity. I'm here to show all that I can give. Generosity. I'm here to set the bar. Just sit back and watch how I live. After you. I thank you. Please take mine. Wow, okay. Some may say, rarity, don't be so big-hearted and bold. Treating strangers like their friends, this town's too big and cold. But this is how I play my cards, I'm not a Oh, Manhattan, what you do to us? What if you find a gloomy ghost? It's no intimidating thing. Just be kind without a fuss. Generosity, I'm here to show all that I can do. Generosity, you are the key. Manhattan, I'm
What a ridiculously great song. Oh man, that's so cool. So she they're just having the best time of their life. They get in town and they are ridiculously nice to everyone. And this is how you should like literally always act. You always want to be smiling, happy, positive, crushing it, booming hard. And always, you know, doing everything you can for other people. Um, sometimes you you know, she's like literally giving people gifts, which is like the coolest thing ever. Um, so do like really like whatever you can to be generous uh, to others. And we're gonna see how this plays out. Uh, throughout the rest of the episode. So what's cool is so she comes to town because there's like this huge um, fashion show, um, this, this huge, huge thing they're doing. And so at this competition, um, there is like 20 designers or something, and they're all going to like have their, their models go across the stage and, you know, they'll wear their dresses and it'll be the best time ever. And whoever wins is going to get like a huge contract to work with one of the biggest uh, producers of some TV show in the area. And so because of that, it's a pretty stiff competition since there's like a pretty significant reward for the people that win. Um, and so Rarity comes and she's like looking at everyone and, and she's got like a, her, um, her rack of dresses, right? So she brings with her, you know, all these cool dresses that she made and, and she's been preparing uh, for a very, very, very long time. Um, that looks like it's a rack of dresses. And so she meets with one of her, her designer friends and she's, hey, yeah, how you doing? It's nice to meet you. They have a connection, right? They have a bond. And um, so she says, oh, well, let me look at your dresses. Oh, wow, nice dresses. And Rarity, she, she spent a very, very long time um, making this very special fabric uh, for the dresses. It's like, you know, it's like this cool, like, purple thing and it's like mesh and it's like looks really good and it's just like some cool complex little fabric that she made like by herself as a custom design and it's like super super cool and basically like all of her dresses are made out of this fabric um so you know her friend sees this and her friend is like wow that's some nice fabric you know can i have a little bit of it uh to use and she's like sure yeah here and she gives her like a roll of the fabric to use for accents or something um, and she gives it to her why? She gives it to her because she's generous. She gives it to her because she's nice. She gives it to her because she has the total and complete correct belief that if you give out positive vibes and if you give out positivity and if you share and are generous with others, that that positivity and that growth and that benefit will come back to yourself. Why do you think some of the most wealthy people on this planet are giving away so much of their wealth, making huge donations to charity? Because what you give away comes back M multiples, multiples, multiples over um, in, in personal returns and emotional returns and returns in all aspects of your life. Um, I read a book a long time ago called Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins and it, it just changed everything. I, I can't recommend it enough. It's amazing. Um, and in Money Master the Game, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest uh, concepts that, that he dives into is this idea of charity and charity being so ridiculously important. Um, that it, it just it changes everything um, and the more you can give you know it's it's not a loss but in reality it's it's a plus and it's, it's just by being generous right um, and that's like you know charity and giving away I mean that is the core of generosity um, and so it's just so 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 powerful um, and so she gives her this fabric and then she goes home the next day and the competition starts the next it starts in a couple days or something and she comes back the next day and her designer friend has her own little th collection of dresses now and her collection of dresses literally looks exactly the same as Rarity's. She made the entire new collection out of this special fabric that Rarity gave her uh, the day before which is just freaking ridiculous and so she presents her new collection and the judges, I mean everybody just loves it. They think it's amazing because um, it's got this awesome fabric and everyone's super happy and excited about it. Um, the problem, of course, is that's Rarity's fabric, but no one freaking knows. And Rarity is up to present, like, after her the next day. And so because she's presenting the next day, it's going to look like she copied her friend, even though her friend just, like, totally ripped her off, which was, like, a big dick move. Um, and so even though she's, like, basically stealing Rarity's designs, which is just a jerk, jerk, jerk move. Um, and it, it sucks because, like, she takes advantage of her generosity. Um, and, and seriously messes her up. So after that happens, she has to go home. She goes back to her hotel and she goes to her hotel with all of her friends. Um, basically says, hey guys, um, cause she brought them here to like go to some really cool big play. Um, and she says, hey, um, before you go to that giant play thing, 
Um, do you guys think that you can come and help me make like all these dresses again because somebody stole my designs? Um, and her friends are amazing, amazing, amazing. Because remember the power of the group, the power of the relationships, the connections. They're all like super positive and super excited to work with her and help her. And they say, yeah, of course, you bet, you bet, we'll help you out. And so they like spend all night um, making like brand new dresses and it's just tons and tons and tons of work for everybody. It's just ridiculous, it's insane. Um, and Rarity's out, she's getting old fabrics, just crazy, crazy, crazy. They all make new dresses. So the next morning, you know, these guys, um, they, they're supposed to like go to this big play that they, they got special tickets to, um, which is like the coolest thing ever. And that's what Rarity did, right? She was very, very generous and got them these super special tickets so they could come with her and go to this play and then see the fashion show and have fun. Um, and they really want to go to this play. And so the play is like right before the fashion show, right? And so, like, they really want to go to the play, and so they leave to go to the play, because that's, like, what they were there for. And then Rarity's, like, super upset, because, like, they're leaving her to go and, and finish and do everything on her own, and they feel terrible about it. Um, and she feels, like, betrayed and abandoned um, in her time of need, which is just awful, awful, awful. Um, because her generosity, it just, it was sad, sad, so, so, so sad. And so, as the story goes forth, um, she like has to make it work and so because she has to make it work she just keeps going all freaking night um and just non-stop making all these dresses for the for the show and she gets mad at her friends because her friends go and they and she feels abandoned um even though they're still with her and they stick with her and they do all of the work behind her back they go hard they do it they self-sacrifice they sacrifice their joy they don't go to the show and instead they get the work done for rarity. Work for a friend. Because that's more important to them than some show. And they take a ton and ton and ton of self-sacrifice. And what's cool is you remember in the song, you kind of saw rarity tipping like the, the bellhop or the, and they help the taxi guy. Um, I mean, they finish this like five freaking minutes before she's about to show it at the show. And so the bellhop is like ridiculously helpful with getting everything there. And then the taxi guy like stops everything he does and helps these guys. So the generosity that she shared with them suddenly started flowing back to her and came to her in her time of need. These people that she impacted just out of her pure spirit came back to help her and get her here on time so that she could perform and do what she really needed to do. Uh, which was awesome, and get it done with her friends, alongside her friends, who were the most important key factors of getting all this work done. So basically, she goes, she drops off her dresses, and the models, they take care of everything from there after, so she can just kind of walk away. It's not a big deal. Um, and so she goes with her friends, and she goes to meet her friends and say hi to her friends and say thanks so much for the help, and she's sorry that she had to mess up the stuff. Um, but thankfully, she got like a whole new screening of this cool play they wanted to go to. So even though they missed it and they had this self-sacrifice, they still got to go uh, to their awesome play, which is great for them, great for everybody involved. They all had a great time. Um, and then what's cool is for th this friend that, that stole Rarity's idea, she had like a little assistant, right? And as, you know, they finish up the show, they get a notice uh, from, from her that, she, you know, she, she got second place or she lost or something. Um, and she feels so sad. She's like, oh, that's terrible. I'm so sad. But then again, she's like, you know what? It's okay. Cause she got to have fun with her friends. She's generous. She's happy. And she takes this news with a spin of positivity because she's ready to have a happy life. And she knows that this is, it's okay. It's a benefit, right? You always want to spin it on with positivity. You always want to say, yes, this is good. Yes, this is great. Yes, happiness, success. But then what's interesting is this assistant that worked for her that stole her ideas um because remember even though she was generous it kind of backfired what it allowed her to do is push herself to a new extreme and create more creativity more teamwork more collaboration and push through a new barrier that she never would have been able to push through if she didn't have this temporary pain at the beginning when that designer stole her things um so she comes into the theater and she walks in and says hey you actually won you know your friend she freaking lied because she's mean and this is your trophy they hoped that you wouldn't come and get it and so you would forfeit your trophy and she would win. So she actually wins and then she, her generosity attracts this, this person who was working for the competition to come to her, to fire boss and say, you actually won, you are the success, you win the competition, congratulations. She could have easily just sat there, said nothing, let her forfeit the trophy, go home and be a total loser. But because of the generosity she showed to everyone around her and her boss and everyone um, 
and because she just felt so, so, so bad that her boss had taken advantage of her and used her that it rifted apart their friendship and their connection and just got destroyed because of the terrible, terrible character trait, um, the terrible lies that she told. Because you never, never, never get to the top of the game, like in the fashion game. You never get to the top of anything by cheating and lying. Because you have to build the tallest building. You can't just knock down other people. Um, and that's pretty much exactly what happens here. So, you know, they're, they're in the theater and they get this trophy and she's like, wow, thank you, that's awesome. And all this generosity starts to flow back towards her that she was giving out earlier. It comes right back to her immediately. And then she takes on this new assistant and says, hey, you know what? Would you like to come work for me now that I have to make all these new orders? And then she's like, sure, you bet. And so she gets her whole new job. Um, and I mean, like, look, like, if you ever want to get like a job anywhere, like all you have to do is give a ridiculous amount of, val amount of value beforehand. And the instant that you do that, it's like walking right into an open door. It's ridiculously easy. So just give tons and tons and tons of value beforehand, like just like what she did. Um, and she's like, yeah, of course, let's come work for me and we'll um, make all these dresses. You can make all my dresses in, in Manhattan so she can go home to Ponyville, right? And so that's a very, very powerful friendship, powerful connection that lasts pretty much throughout the entire rest of the series with, with um, Coco Palmel, who was that assistant, um, which is super, super cool. And it all stems from this act of kindness, this act of generosity of saying, I will forfeit the win of my boss and give it to you instead because you're the true, rightful, grateful, and generous winner. She deserves the prize. Okay, awesome. So, Pinky Apple Pie. So this one's like ridiculously fun. Um, so, Pinky Pie is like reading a like book on genealogy, which is like family history and stuff. And as she's reading this book on family history, um, she like finds this one page and it kind of like cuts off. Um, but the page, it says like, pinky apple pie right so it's like pinky and like apple and she's like pretty sure that this means that she's related to applejack um some way or another which is like pretty crazy no one really knows um why or it was possible so she, pinky she goes to the apple farm right she goes to meet applejack and, and her family and says hey you know it says we're related do you think we're related um look at this book on genealogy that she found um, that says they're related. And, you know, they're already such, such, such close friends. Um, so if they were related, it would be like, you know, they'd be super happy, be cool with it, um, and it'd be awesome. So they're like, you know, I don't really know uh, if we're related, but remember earlier, um, they have that, that grandma, that aunt, uh, Goldie Delicious. And so they say, you know, Goldie's really, really, really good at, at family history and she'll know everything. And so they decide that they're gonna go on this huge road trip to, um, to Goldie's house and try to figure out if they're their family or not. So they get in like this wagon and then Big Mac kind of like carries the wagon. Um, and then they go on this huge road trip, right? And what's cool is like, you start to see a whole lot of family dynamic develop here and how they like actually underlying functions of their relationships uh, grow to help them succeed and, and expand their influence and more importantly, sort of the way they interact with each other, which is really, really, really powerful. So let's let's look at that. So they're going you know, hard, they're doing the best, and they get to this point where basically um, there's like a, a split in the road and they've been singing this song and doing this dance. And the problem with singing the song and doing the dance um, is that their cart was pretty old. And so their cart kind of like breaks and like shatters into a million pieces and they don't really know what to do. Um, but thankfully they packed like everything known to humanity in their, in their cart. So they have like a raft and so they, they take their raft and they get in like a river um, and they are a little bit upset at this point because like they destroyed their cart and they have no idea how they're gonna get home. Um, but it's okay, it's okay, it's not a big deal. They just get in the river and have this little boat and tensions kind of start to arise a little bit when there's like a fork in the river, right? And they don't really know like which way to go. Um, and so there's just one way to go where it's just like this bright clear path. And this is another way they can go where it's like this dark tunnel in the middle of nowhere that looks really scary. Um, and up to this point, like, there's been very, very, very slight, slight, minimal, tangible arguments between the two. So, like, at the baseline function here, at the very, very bottom, like, they've had some just mi tiny little arguments along the path here. And so because of these tiny little arguments, they're starting to sort of crack at their foundation. And as they start to get into more complex situations, like you know, figuring out where they should go and how they should function, 
and what they should do, these tracks, they start to expand, they start to sort of break down the actual underlying emotions of the family um, and destroy kind of what they think about each other and a little bit more importantly, you know, how they go about problem solving because they aren't really functioning in unity at this point. They're sort of fighting against each other because there's a lot of tension between like the cart breaking and everybody getting a little bit of stuff about the boat. And so they get to this tunnel, they get to this fork in the river and they decide that, or Granny decides like, like basically like, oh, let's go left. And it kind of like splits between the group and some people are upset, some people are like, okay, cool. So they go left and they go through this like, they kind of black it out, um, but it's just supposed to be like this, this crazy dangerous and dark cave thing. And they, you hear like them screaming and there's like bats everywhere and it's just bad, bad, bad situation um, for everybody. And it's just really a little bit sketch, a little bit scary and it ruins sort of their, their experience at the time. And so because of that, they, they get out the other side, right? And they're going, you know, over to Goldie Delicious's house. And they're just like livid with each other because it's like they're so upset that like everything went wrong and that they did the wrong path or went the wrong way. Um, and that they weren't able to listen to each other. They weren't able to understand each other. They weren't able to connect, right? They didn't have this, uh, this mastermind they used to have before where they were all part of an intermittent family, and a wee family. Because the, the positivity that had predominantly uh, dominated their lives beforehand, all of a sudden it was starting to get replaced with little, little tiny seeds of negativity, little seeds of doubt, little seeds of fear, badness. Um, and so it showed in their relationships and it showed in the way they grow and the way they strain because they were unable to actually connect and figure out exactly what needed to be done to have the growth that they desire, which like sucks, right? Like that's, it's bad. And so as they start to get a little bit more angry at each other and it starts to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, all of a sudden, you know, they, they get to Goldie's house. Um, they get to Goldie's house, okay? And at Goldie's house, she, she gets out her book and she's like looking at the family history and, and what's going on. And she says, oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, looks through her book, figures out. She finds Pinkie Pie's names are Apple Pie. And then she gets to the page with, you know, Pinkie Apple Pie. And she looks at it and then she looks at it again. She squeezes her eyes at it, tries to figure out what's going on. She turns around, she says to the family, um, that there, there's a smudge. There's a smudge in the paper where it would, where, where her name would be um, if she was part of the family history, if she was part of the family tree. And so because there's a smudge, she just, she doesn't know. Um, she can't tell if they're, she, Pinky is actually related to Applejack or not. Um, there's just no way to tell. And what they realize is that it doesn't really matter if they're related. It doesn't really matter if they're family or not. If they can get rid of this negativity, right? And if they can overcome all these challenges and get through them as a group, as a team, pushing through hardships and negativity and going to a better future where they are able to overcome these cracks, they're able to overcome their challenges. All of a sudden, as soon as they can do that, whether or not they're related or not, it just does not matter because they're so closely connected by their relationships by their ties and they're brought in under an overarching sphere that they have such a close connection just like family and whether or not a piece of paper says it whether or not it's officially recognized or, or not it makes no difference to them because they know that they're happy together and they've been singing songs the whole time they're getting ready to go home and have a great time they feel so close they feel so much like family that they don't need validation. They don't need external uh, proof because they know on the inside that they believe in their happiness and they believe in their connections. And they know that what they have is something special and it's something that matters to them. And if it matters to them, then that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter what you know the book says or what other people think because they know that on the inside, the way that they're going to grow, the way they're going to develop, the way they're going to solve their problems, it only matters what they think about each other. Not what the world thinks, not what society thinks. It's all them. It's all you. Um, and so often people are so focused on like what other people think or other problems or, you know, 
chances to get ahead or, or what you know people will say about something but in reality like none of that matters right it, it, it makes no difference what some other people think about you if you're totally and completely confident convinced and joyful in the relationships that you have and you have total belief they'll continue to grow pay dividends for years and years and years.